my name is Villa Vesterin and uh, CEO co-founder of Gray Area. Uh, we just released um, two months ago uh, our first uh, um, game. It's uh, in short, it's a, it's a bit of a mouthful, but it's a location-based MMORPG for iPhone. It's called Shadow Cities. Um, how many of you, first of all, how many of you know what is an MMORPG? Good. So a lot of gamers there. Um, how many of you have you? How many? How many have even even remotely heard about Shadow Cities? Quite a few. All right. Uh, hopefully after today it will be burned into your uh, memories. What it will be? It won't be. It's not available in um, in Netherlands yet. It's only available. Let me switch hands. It's only available in Finland at the moment. Uh, we're ramping up. Um, looking into opening other markets. Um, so let's go into it. There we go. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to just yet tell you what, what the game actually looks like, what it's about, but I'll, I'll first tell you how it kind of came to be. So, so uh, after that, we'll dive in to look at the game um, what it looks like, what do you do in, in Shadow Cities. And again, we just opened it up in one market. We have no clue uh, where it will go, but, uh, but, but we have some, some thoughts what, um, what it might look like when it, um, when it comes here to Amsterdam and, and also, also the other markets. So first up, uh, this, is, uh, this is gray area. Uh, kind of the, the, the heart of the company, um, the backbone, really. So, you know, if I go, I'm just going to introduce the guys so when I later on talk about them, you'll know who I'm talking about. So Andreas is the guy in the three, uh, then Miko, myself, and Teemo. So that, that is gray area, really briefly. So into it, um, this is really kind of the, uh, the heart of our thinking uh, when it comes to location-based games or services. Uh, a, a notion of uh, your city is a game, um, by which we mean that th that's kind of the context, the setting uh, that we think about when we design games and, 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 and really the, not some, some futuristic, uh, like, like future, but actually the, the cities that we, we, we live in the every day in those cities. Uh, another notion, like, like the idea of shadow, shadow cities is, is we didn't have it yesterday. It's actually uh, um, thinking that uh, like from years ago, some, probably some 10 years ago, uh, it was one of those things that, uh, that uh, first uh, the guys, and, and, and then later on, later on with me, uh, we were thinking that it would be really cool to have a game which is based on a, on a real city. Like, what if, you know, what if you could, could go to the train station and there would be this secret tunnel under it and, and, and really bring the kind of the magic into the real world? With, with technology, of course, but, but this is kind of where... Uh, where it all got started, and uh, it's this is a very cheesy example, but if you think about Harry Potter, how very, in my mind, unintuitively, they mix magic into the real world. So our thinking was like like way back that you know this would be a really cool thing. Like uh, in a way, if you think about um, Blade Runner meets. Um, Minority Report meets something magical. So that was kind of the backdrop that, that we thought that, you know, this would be really cool. And that's kind of then started to work on the company, on the game. We didn't, not quite sure what it will be. And then this happened. One more thing, right? Uh, so Steve came out with, with, um, with iPhone. This was uh, 2007, I think. Um, I was organizing, I had a, uh, I organized uh, open coffee meetups um, type of a get-together 
in Helsinki, and, and, and there was uh, Mikko, uh, one of the other co-founders, was there with his new shiny iPhone, and, uh, and uh, he had this idea, and, and he was, he was uh, showing it to, to others, and, and Andreas, the other guy, uh, I was like, oh, okay, what, you know, what does it do? Can you, you know, what happens if I press that? And 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 kind of wasn't sure what it was about. And then Mikko pulled out an application called uh, Jazam. How many of you know it? I don't know if I pronounced it right. There we go. Quite a few. So it, for those who don't, uh, if you if you open up the application, uh, you hear a song. Um, you you kind of get the application to listen to the song. It tells you what song it is. And, and Andreas was like instantly like, shit, that really is magical. You know, we can definitely do this. So that's, that's how it kind of got started. You have the, the notion of this is a game we would really like to do. Uh, and, and then, you know, bring this magic in the real world. And then kind of the technology comes to meet you halfway. So like with anything really new, um, you don't have like a clear blueprint, right? You don't know exactly how things will play out. So you try a lot of stuff, and we did. Like how does a game, an MMORPG, how does it smartly communicate with the city? And, and we did all kinds of, and these are just layouts, also you know, similar stuff in the, in the back end. Um, and and you know, we, we tried it all. So, uh, what, what came out, um, what, what Shadow Cities really is about. So again, uh, it's a location-based MMORPG for iPhone. So if I, if I break that down, uh, location-based, it, it kind of takes the context, context, understands exactly where you are, quite you know, intuitive. Um, MMO you know, in a way that it's, uh, it's multiplayer, uh, tons of players playing together, and currently o only for iPhone, you know, because of the reasons I outline. Steve came out with it back in 2007, 2008. It was kind of the only thing that would fill the requirements that we wanted, you know, the experience that kind of we wanted to convey. So, uh, when you open the application, uh, first, this is, this is kind of what you see. And, uh, and it's, it's quite hard to describe only with screenshots. But um, firstly, how we think about the location uh, in itself. It's um, right now, I, I believe like every uh, application has some kind of a check-in model. But, but we look at cities uh, from a bit different point of view. Uh, we, look at it, we look at them like uh, on neighborhood level. So in, in a way that, uh, that uh, a, a rich city is a lot more than a collection of uh, venues, a collection of Starbucks, Starbucks cafes where you can get a discount. So a city is much more, for example, Amsterdam. I'm, uh, I've been fortunate to have a special relationship with the city. Uh, I used to live here in 2006 for about nine months, close to... Vibaustrad, um, and um, and I, I think you know Amsterdam is a wonderful city. It's very warm in a way how it kind of you know the the uh, the houses open up to the street. They are very close by the canals, all of that stuff, and you don't really get that with a check-in, right? So so you know still early days, but we we believe that it's much more interesting to look at cities on a neighborhood by neighborhood level. Uh, this is something that people love in the game. Um, th this was uh, in the one of the, one of the open coffee meetups, might have been the same. There was, uh, you saw there was four founders, right? Uh, I told you how Mikko pitched the idea to Andreas. And Temu, Temu, Temu was on holiday at the, at the time and uh, he hadn't heard it yet and, and uh, um, he came back and, and Mikko, Mikko and Andreas was, with, you know, we need to show it to them one. And it would be, you know, <coughs> them is our genius in residence, if you will, you know, um, machine learning, AI, all that stuff. And, and um, 
uh, the guys pitched it to Temu. This would be really cool if you could do all these like runes, draw on an iPhone screen. And um, Temu thought it for about 10 seconds, like, yeah, I can do it. So that's how, that's how the rune drawing came to be. And it's really, it, it builds on the idea that I described that it would be really cool if, you know, if we would have a game that I would be, I would be playing part of my every day. I'm not just some hedgehog jumping levels, but actually, you know, it would feel that it, you know, it's actually me playing the game. So, you know, you have this magical device and it's like a window into a parallel world. Shadow cities, right? So, so how the story goes, uh, like within every great MMORPG, uh, you know, there's a st really strong story involved. And in Shadow Cities, uh, this is how it goes, very briefly. Uh, magic has been gone hundreds of years, right? And uh, now it's back. And with this magical device, uh, you're a mage when you have it. And you can take part in those battles. And, and uh, how's, how's, I'm a, how am I with time? It's not. Ten minutes, okay. So uh, um, anyway, magic has been gone. Uh, you enter the game. You open the app. Um, you choose one of the two teams, right? You're either architect or an animator. And uh, once you have chosen your team, uh, thank you, you find, uh, you find friends. It's a very social experience. Uh, and with, with your team, you want to conquer the city back, neighborhood by neighborhood, right? So what you have here, if, if you look at that uh, screenshot, the fires, they denote different neighborhoods. There might be your Don, so on and so forth. Uh, you have some NPCs, the, uh, the you know, green, green uh, uh, light ball is uh, what we call spirits, an NPC, you can battle them. In this picture, you don't see other, other players. Uh, and, and then you can see kind of like, it's like a dystopic world um, you can see the map UI, uh, you can see different menus up there. So, you know, it's, it's quite, the UI is quite deep when you get into it. So kind of, this is the first screen. And of course, some resources, like you see mana bottles and so forth. But this is the, this is kind of the, uh, the first uh, screen you would see when you enter the game. And then you have some, you know, very familiar stuff. Uh, from, you know, from any game. You level up, you build your character, so on and so forth. So that's, in a, in a, you know, really briefly, in a nutshell, that's uh, Shadow Cities. But like I said, uh, it's still super early. Uh, we released it, um, like I said, about two months ago. Uh, we re released it in, in Finland and... Uh, um, like Mark uh, kindly introduced me. I've been uh, working uh, w with a website called Arctic Startup for quite a while and seen a lot of startups. And, you know, what you normally tell and what people told us and been telling me is, is that, you know, don't be upset if, you know, people don't really, you know, even comment when you guys launch. And, and uh, you know, you, if you're lucky, you, a few people might comment. You might, you know, engage them in a discussion, turn them perhaps into a user or a player in this case. And when we, we opened it up, um, we we're gonna launch it. And, and the previous day we opened up the application in iTunes and just send it to a few friends uh, to see if there was any bugs. And, and people just, you know, instantly, boom, we shot up right to number one spot in, in the fi Finnish app store, not the global one, but the Finnish one. and. Uh, People, you know, came through doors and windows, and, and you know, it, it was really, uh, it was a lot of fun, but, uh, but, but, you know, very uh, positive surprise for us. There's a lot of, a uh, lot of, a lot of, a lot of activity. Uh, what people started to do, they, you know, built their own wikis, uh, talked about printing T-shirts, writing tutorials. Uh, they organized, I think last one was um, 
last Friday, they organized real world meetups. Uh, so really passionate about, uh, about the game, about the application. And, and a lot of funny stuff, like, like the behavior that emerges. Uh, people just, you know, small stuff. People taking different route to work, uh, you know, riding around the city in a tram, driving around all night long just to exploring new areas. Uh, recently I heard a story, there's a there's father and son, right? And uh, and the father is, it's, it's his phone and, and uh, character and he's driving a car and the son is sitting in the back and uh, every time the son sees enemy colors, like architects are orange, animators are green, uh, he's, he tells the fathers to slow down and starts, you know, smashing the enemy structures. And, and then they, as a, as, a, as a couple, they drive around the city finding new stuff to do. So there's a lot of, lot of, lot of very interesting uh, stuff even, even already at this point. Uh, and again, you know, it's, it's, uh, we released it and, and, and uh, it wasn't perfect, but uh, um, a lot of people, you know, they, it's, it's very new, it's, it's abstract. You don't necessarily realize, you know, what it exactly is. And the first try, you know, a few bucks perhaps. But, but still, you know, people kept coming, even though it might have crashed a few times. Uh, it, there was something that uh, people really liked, that, the hook. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's very easy to get into because when you open it up, it, it's, the, it's your own familiar street where you live, where you work. Uh, and, uh, you know, our initial thesis was that, you know, this is something like Twitter that people kind of, you know, dip in and dip out of. You know, they might play two minutes a day, right, uh, on a tram stop. And, and these guys are playing like hours at a time. So, so it's really surprising to see how, how sticky something like this could be. Uh, and th these are some of the notions uh, that, uh, that we have seen, some of the emerging behavior. Um, what you do in, in, in Shadow Cities where you mostly play it is, uh, or what we've, we've seen happening is, uh, you know, one, close to your home, so when, when you are at home, and two, where you work, so two places. And com when you're commuting between these, between these two places. And um, uh, around these locations, it's, it's funny how, like for example, in my case, uh, it, you know, you live somewhere, you probably know, um, you know your spouse, your kids, maybe your next door neighbor but not necessarily a lot, lot more around that neighborhood. Then you have friends all over. But uh, with Shadow Cities, you, you know, every time, like let's say you play, like every time you have, you have put the kids to sleep or after the dinner or something like that, and there's always the same guy. He's always there and he's, he always, you know, he always takes over the neighborhood from me. But gladly I have this guy who I can, you know, battle it out and I can defend my neighborhood. And, and, the, and the street I live in. So, so you know, the new kind of ties emerge uh, in those locations that have not necessarily been there before. Uh, going forward, so um, when, when opening up new markets, and, and this, is, this is again um, something that uh, only time will tell, but, um, uh, we believe that, that cities uh, and different neighborhoods have unique personalities. Again, this plays into, you know, the venues or, or uh, uh, Starbucks cafes are not necessarily the only things. You know, the city is more than that, right? It's almost like, you know, it's almost like a football team. It, you, you're proud of it. Uh, if you're from, I don't know, say Shibuya, Tokyo, Jordan, Amsterdam, um, Upper West Side, uh, Brooklyn, or Helsinki for that matter. You're kind of proud of it. You know, somebody tries to invade your neighborhood, you're like, no way, ain't happening. So, so you know, you defend that and, you know, with, with those people in that neighborhood. And, and it, it, really, um, it really ties you in, into the game. So, you know, we're really excited to see as things scale where it takes shadow cities. 
So, you know, starting out, um, what I started to describe, you know, having this notion, this, this game that we would like to play, but nobody, nobody really made it. So, uh, so, so, you know, we started to work on it ourselves. And uh, if you take in heart the, the notion of uh, uh, your city is a game and, and try to bring a bit of magic into it, uh, for us, uh, out came Shadow Cities. And, and, you know, for each of you, it might be something different. Thank you. Made it, three minutes. So if, if you guys have any questions, remarks, critique, comments, shoot. You launched in Helsinki, where are you launching next? Um, we're, we're looking at, uh, of course right now uh, we're looking at US. So, so but, but um, and, and kind of kind of ramping up, making sure we have the resources. If if any one of you guys have ever uh, developed games, or you know build a whole new MMORPG, or are thinking of doing it, don't do it with you know four people. So, so <coughs> you know bringing in a bit more resources and making sure we have everything in place. We don't we want the experience to be great, and now we kind of seen it you know, how the, how the dynamics play out. And that was the idea, because it was something totally new. We didn't know how it, it would behave. And, and now we want to make sure that uh, we can roll that out as, as a great experience. OK, thank you. We have a question back here. It's Michael van Adrichem, and uh, he's from Working Tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I've got a small question. Uh, one of the hardest things, of course, to do in an MMO is to keep it fresh. Um, you can see that with all the MMOs that have uh, launched recently. Can you wave where you at? Hi. Oh, there we go. <laughs> hey. uh, it's one of the things, uh, it's the hardest thing to do to keep an MMO fresh. Uh, what if you're going to hit millions of people that are going to play it worldwide? How, what are your future plans to keep it fresh and keep people entertained in uh, new ways? Show. So, so um, I don't know what are you guys laughing at, but... Hopefully it's not me. So, uh, how are we gonna keep it fresh? Um, I think it's it's as with so many other games, it's a new content. Uh, what we've learned with the game, it's for us, it's a bit different kind of content. You can do all kinds of stuff with with different locations, and but but it, it really comes down to you know it it just doesn't automatically happen. So, so you need to have a theme, team of people, you know, thinking about what kind of new stuff uh, do you do you bring into the game. So I, I do agree with you that Christian? that unlike you know service development, you know, it just doesn't play itself out. It's, it's not a Facebook. Mark. So, Fila, I think a lot of uh, the people in the audience actually want to see a demo. We have a camera over there. I can hold your mic. Can you show us how it works? That would be great. So, so basically, you know, I just opened it, the app up. What I see is, oh, now there's somebody else. Thor Samson, he's kicking my ass. There we go. So he's, he's casting. What you do is you cast spells. Right now, there's, there's not, not a whole lot of content because we haven't really opened Amsterdam up. It's just kind of like a, you know, empty shell, if you, if you will. But there's the NPCs. There's a... Sam, let me kill him. I will. <laughs> nice. Hold it in front of the camera. So now what I'm doing is I'm I'm casting, or I was casting. There we go. I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to kick his ass. <laughs> so what you do is you cast spells. You can, you can for, for example, fight. I just killed one of the spirits. Uh, you, you can see that there's a campaign going. This is in Finland. Uh, you can see who's winning. There's, you know, all the 
kind of the, the leader board. Um, you have the chat right there. Uh, tons of people talking in Finnish, I take it. Um, which one are you filming? Both, okay. Uh, and, uh, but, but what we're doing is that uh, we're really bringing a lot of new content, uh, tweaking the UI, uh, all kinds of stuff. But this is kind of, kind of, in, in short, this is, this is the experience. You would see a lot of stuff happening here if this would be open in, uh, in Amsterdam. And, and what you see, the other, other person, there's this one character right there. Uh, I just refilled. Now I'm ready to kick your ass again. Uh, so, and, and, and you can see your character here. Uh, so, I, I think you also have a video online? I do, I do. If you guys go to um, shadowcities.com, uh, you can, um, uh, you can, you know, watch kind of like a preview video, the screenshots, you can check it out. And I have also promised uh, Mark that uh, whenever we come to um, Netherlands, and it's hopefully very soon. I'll give all of you a heads up before anybody else. So, so we have one more question. Um, the business model. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Thank you. Can you do what, sorry? Oh, business model. Um, so, let me see. Oh, did I skip that slide? No, I didn't. There we go. So if you, if you look at that, Right there, on the lower left hand, you see the mana bottle. That's kind of that's in the heart of the business model. So it's a free app. Uh, anybody can play it, and we have made sure that we have balanced the game economy in a way that 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 you can you you know you can compete and and play it just as anybody else, even if you're not paying a penny. But uh, you know what you do is you can buy mana. And, and that, of course, gives you more resources if you don't want to wait up, if you don't want to save up, uh, and all that. So that, you know, it really is a free app, and, and uh, virtual goods is the business model. So it's actually uh, grossing more than Angry Birds at this moment, right? That's what you said, at least. It, yeah, top grossing, it's, it's, been, it's been, of course, it's like day by day. You know that's how they show it, and it's it's only in uh, it's in Finland, uh, but yes, it it was uh, it, it's been um, kind of one of the one of the top apps and and continues to be. Thank you again, Vila. No, thank you guys. <laughs>